I think of times when I have called on God and he has came to my rescue. He saved my soul when I called on him and confessed my sins. He saved me. And I think of times that I have called on God in my moment of need and he's met me there. I'm grateful for that this morning. I'm grateful and um, I'm grateful we don't serve a cold, dead God. We serve a living God that cares about us. And can you imagine in your darkest moment when you have needed God the most and you had a cold, dead God to go to, would you just lay your head up against it and hope for the best? That's not who our God is. Our God is real this morning. I want to minister to you first things first. And we're going to go through scripture. My first scripture is going to be in Exodus, the 20th chapter. We're going to read verses 1 through 3. And I'd like to say thank you to everyone that's taking care of the things this morning. Don't we look festive yeah. with our, I just, they did a wonderful job. I, I like that. I enjoy it. Thank you. Exodus 20, 1 through 3. We're going to read, take our first scripture there this morning. Father, we ask that you just open our hearts and our minds for your word today, Lord. We ask that we leave here changed individuals by your power and by your blood. We give you all praise in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Uh, first things first, I want to talk about priority. And uh, Dale thinks I procrastinate. I don't procrastinate because I'm never late. But some things I kind of save for the last minute. I had to be somewhere yesterday. At, I needed to be in town at 5.30, and I was still in my pajamas at a quarter to five. But I made it early. So that's okay, right? You know. And then there's things of us, there's things in our lives where uh, we have priorities. Does anybody, has your, anybody, you feel free to answer or feel free to ignore me. Um, has anybody ever gotten your priorities out of a good alignment in your personal life? Sometimes we get our priorities a little upside down. And I, I don't want to take this, I'm very cut and dry sometimes. I'm a little too cold and sometimes a little too blunt or forward with some answers. And I have to really consciously work on that. In my, that's my personality and who I am. And um, I could fix every problem you have today. If you'll listen to what I want to tell you, I could, now I can't heal you, I can't save you, but if you'll hear my heart today, and if you're in your life, individually, if you will put God first, all of the other stuff is just stuff, it doesn't matter. And I can tell you, it will fix every situation you're in. If you'll just keep God first. And when we put God first, these other things fall away. Because our focus and our interests, and I'm going to share a little something that happened. How many of you guys use social media? <clears throat> we do. Yeah, I, it's okay. It's got to have a balance to it. I read a little blip on social media last night, and I knew I was preaching God first today, keeping God first, because it'll fix anything that's wrong in your life. And I read a little thing, and it just hit me the wrong way. It irritated me. And I wanted to tell that person that did it, shame on you, but then I'm not responsible for them, they are. And it hit me the wrong way. And I went to bed, and I thought, I didn't even tell Dale, because then he was going to talk about stuff. It just rubbed me the wrong way. And I went to bed and I laid there and thought about it a minute. And then I thought, well, I want to tell Dale because I want to see if he agrees with me. Well, come on. Do you, anybody ever want to find somebody <laughs> to agree with you? Oh, yeah. When you're not putting God first, usually is when you want it the most. You look for a partner. And there was part, he, Millie was in bed in the guest room, and I'm in our room, and he's in the living room, and I'm like, well, I just wish he'd come to bed so I could tell him before I fall asleep. <laughs> then, this is what happened. Conviction hit my heart. And I said, I cannot fill the pulpit tomorrow and preach to you that you put God first if 
I'm not willing to do it in every situation of my life. So as I prayed and said my prayers and was talking to the Lord as usual before I went to sleep last night, I said, God, I choose to put you first over my poor opinion of a situation. It fixed me last night. And if you can learn to put God first in every situation, and uh, many times what I've learned with my personality and my disposition, and they'll face forward, please don't look at them. When I put God first, it usually, it usually requires that I'm going gonna, gonna to end up shutting my mouth. Anybody? Because when I'm putting the flesh first, I'm going to give you my two cents and my opinion. But when I put God first, it checks the flesh. You know what I mean when I say it checks the flesh. The Holy Spirit, when you, something pauses in you and says, wait a minute, the Holy Spirit's giving you an option to avoid trouble that you're gonna, your mouth will get you into. Okay, I'm going to say something fun and then I'm going to move on. Millie's dad in high school, we raised three kids. He wasn't a fighter. He was a good kid most of the time. She asked if I was going to talk about her today on the but this is what I'd always tell him in high school. Don't write checks with your mouth that your body can't cash. Got it? So us as believers have to put God first and check some things before they come out. Amen? Exodus 20, 1 through 3. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the hand of, land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And you notice that is a small g. Amen. Thou shalt have no other gods. See, the Israelites had came out of Egypt, and they had came out of bondage. And the land that they had been, been delivered from was a land of many idols and many gods, with a small g. There were many idols and many gods. And so for them to have one more God to worship, they were like, sure, we'll take another one. If I've got a dozen, what's one more? They were willing to take and hear what God had for them. They were willing to accept it because they already had a lot of gods. But God says to us, you can have no other gods before me. See, we have, sometimes it's hard, and I'm just talking to Connie today, okay? And if this fits you, good. Sometimes it's hard for the flesh in us to set aside some little gods that we've established in our lives. Amen? Sometimes we will, um, we'll like, yes, I believe in God, I believe in creation, I believe in the Bible, and yet at the same time, our spirit man is cluttered with some gods that we have no business having in our lives. Do you believe that this morning? You do your own self-reflection. Sometimes it's hard to set them apart. See, God's got to be first in our lives. I remember when we were first married, uh, they would say, God first, then your spouse, then your children. And I'm like, well, that's crazy. I don't get that. I didn't get it. I didn't understand it. And I will tell you, it caused me some heartache. Because I didn't recognize the significance of putting God in first position in my life. And then when you begin to put God first, all of the other arenas of your life begin to fit together very well. There'll be contentment, there'll be peace, there'll be joy, there'll be happiness. But it requires that we put first things first. And it's requiring that we just put God first. And I, I guess as a young believer, I, I was raised in church my whole life, which does not make you a Christian. But I had a lot of good exposure to the church. But I didn't recognize that I thought putting God first meant that I had no life. Other than just, hmm, church. No, I have a full life. Once I've learned to put God first above and beyond all things, my life became fuller in Christ. Because then he was in his proper position in my life. And all of the other stuff just filters into place. But when we put things in a priority ahead of God that have no business being ahead of God, you are setting.
setting yourself up for some heartache. You're setting yourself up for some turmoil. See, God's first over everything for the believer. Do you believe that this morning? God is first over work. Those of you that are still working a job, God is first over your job. And you say, well, I have to support, I have to have my job, I have to have money to support yourself. God's putting some, some air in your lungs so you can go to your job. Amen? So we can't put things like work, money, popularity, and then I got two that's going to hurt you right here because it hurts me, okay? We can't put pleasure and habits ahead of God. I've done it. It doesn't work for very long. But so, and yet God says we can do things and we can have fun and we, can, we, should, we should be feeling a spirit, a light spirit about us that we're free in Christ. But see, we can't begin to put pleasures and the habits and the things of this world ahead of God. He won't tolerate it. He is going to be first in our lives. Amen? See, what the thing that I'm getting at today, and I want you to hear my heart, whatever is occupying your life, whatever is occupying your life, and it may not even really seem like a little God to you, but if it's occupying your life, it won't be long, and it'll soon control you if God's not first. Well, God's not saying, I'm not saying you can't do anything, you guys. Do you get, my, do you get where this is going? You can live a good, full life. But all of these little things that get in the way of God in your life need to go. That's the best way I know to say it. They need to leave. They need to not <laughs> occupy your soul. Because they will control you eventually if you give place to them. See, the thing that I love about God is, <clears throat> amen, I'm going to back up the screen. Uh, I love his mercy and his grace in my life. I love that he sacrificed a son. I wouldn't sacrifice my son, but he sacrificed his only son for me and you. The thing that I love, when God brings us out of bondage, he sets us free. And you can be as free as you desire to be free. Do you believe that this morning? Now, I don't want to burst anybody's bubble. I have a lot of free stuff today, and I'm going to move along because we've got communion. God does not bring you out of bondage and sin for you to put other things ahead of him and become entangled in them again. Amen? Amen. There's scripture in the New Testament, I don't want to quote it out of context, but it said if I build the things I once destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. I'll have to do some research on that. You guys look it up this week and tell me what you think. See, God doesn't set us free from one bondage for us to pick up some more over here. Did that work? He sets us free because we can be free indeed. Amen? God brings us out of bondage, but the thing that's going to be required is that we don't put things ahead of God. And I'm not talking just material things. We'll put events, we'll put other things, just life stuff, we'll take a priority over God. But then at the same time, we don't have the priority that we need in our personal discipline of life. To keep God first. Priority is regarded or treated as more important. And I'm not, this, I'm not, I sound a little harsh this morning. But listen, I'm not zeroing in on any of you. But I'm preaching just to the real word here this morning. If it's important to you, you will do it. If it is not important to us, Connie included, you will find an excuse. Anybody? Ever make it? I had a friend was in a sticky situation recently. She's my age. She's a month younger than, older than me. So she should have some experience at this, and I love her. She'll probably watch this video. Sorry. But anyway, listen. She said, I'm in a sticky situation. I don't know what to do. And I said, tell him you're not going to do it. Okay, pray for me. I did. She did. It turned out. See, sometimes little things will attach, and entanglement will attach to us. Not even always our own undoing. But it's okay to say no to some things. 
It's okay to keep your priorities focused with Christ alone. Amen? And then all of those other things, they fall into place as they should. <clears throat> Let's turn to Exodus 34, and we're going to read verses 12 through 14 this morning. I hope you help. I hope this is helping you. It helped me last night before I went to sleep. I was able to turn off that mean thought I had. That person doesn't even know. And they never will. Amen? I turned it off. Because why? I'm going to keep first things first. In everything that I do. In every arena of my life. Not just here at the church. Because... I, gotta, I just got stuff for you. You guys look sleepy. Do we need to move around? I don't know. Um, you know, it's real easy to come here and put everything first because you're here. But when we leave here after our hour together and then our coffee social hour, you got a lot of hours this week to be putting first things first. And if you say you don't have time, you're not, you're not putting your priorities in the proper alignment. You're just making an excuse. I'd rather, if I ask you to do something, this is all free deal coming out of nowhere. If I ask you to do something, I'd just rather you say, no, I don't want to, than to make an excuse up to me. Because that puts you on the spot, because you're having to think of something. Like, ooh, maybe I can make a dentist appointment and won't have to go. I don't know, you know. If you're thinking of all kinds of desperate ways. Just say, you know what, this time I really don't want to do that. Be honest with yourself. And when you can be honest with yourself, you'll be able to put first things first with God. God's not deceived by our excuses. He's not deceived by many things that we think we've got it covered. Amen? Exodus 34, 12 through 14 says, Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land whither thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee. But ye shall destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down their groves. Verse 14. For thou shalt worship no other god for the Lord, whose name is. Jealous is a jealous god. God is jealous. Now, jealousy is not good in relationships. We all agree on that. Jealousy in the church causes heartache. Jealousy in a relationship causes heartache. Jealousy in the job place causes heartache. But God is jealous of you and all the things that this world would like to distract you with. He God will not share you. Now, you may think he's sharing you because you show up to church. He's not going to share you. He wants all of you. God wants to be first. And he knows when he's not first in your life. You know that, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, this One of these thoughts on this particular passage is don't join religious rites with sinful people. Don't get entangled in some things that look and appear religious and they're not. Put God first. He'll check you if it's something you should or should not be involved in. We want to know that we give God our loyalty. There's nothing better for an employer to have than a loyal employee. Do you agree? To have a loyal employee. Do you know God desires your loyalty to him? Because he's paid an ultimate price for you. God desires our loyalty. He wants an exclusive devotion to you. What is that called? Um, well, I got some words for it. Uh, uh, I'm editing. Uh, open marriage, is that where you can have, like, you just do whatever? Yeah. Oh No, God's not, you, there's a covenant between you and God. You don't serve God and serve everything else in the sinful world. Does that make sense? The loyalty and the devotion is exclusive to God. See, this is why I just got a lot of free stuff, and I, I want to be kind. But this is why some people are struggling and suffering in their everyday living. Because they're not loyal to God. I like to say it this way. They take just enough God to take the edge off. Anybody? They have just enough of a slim little thread of connection to God to take the edge off of how they're living. It's not going to work. 
He won't tolerate it. He's a jealous God. See, we can't mix worldly worship with true worship of a holy God. They don't go together. We worship a living God. We worship God first. Amen? How many of you have ever said this? And I got six grandbabies. Some of you guys need some grandbabies uh, that don't have them yet. But I have six. And have you ever heard this old saying, oh, I just worship the ground they walk on? That's kind of cuddly and fuzzy and warm. But you know what? I don't. I worship a risen Savior. And then I pray and ask God's hand of protection on my children, on my grandchildren, on my loved ones. I don't want to get tangled up worship this morning. I want to worship a holy God. Luke 16, 13 is our next text. I want us to look there this morning. Luke 16, <clears throat> 13. You guys are so quiet. I'm almost not nervous, but I don't know what's happening. Is the heat on 80? What's going on? <laughs> is everybody that wore out? Are you guys dreading the drive home? I don't know. You're so quiet. Luke 16, 13, this sums it up really well for us. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he, we, he will hold to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And I believe mammon here in this is referring to you can't serve money. But let me say this to you, you cannot serve God and everything else around you. Serve God first. Put God first. Let him have first position in your life. And then you reach out as the body of Christ. And I, we're working on some things here in the community, some people that are in need. When we serve God first and the church has God as our first priority, the church is going to have a ripple effect out into this community. Amen? That is the purpose of us keeping God as our priority. If this built, ooh, ooh, hang on, hang on, filter, somebody yelled it from back there. Um, I'm too deep into it to go out now. If coming into this, <laughs> if coming into this, you guys may not be quiet here in a minute. If coming into this building for one hour a week is your priority, you still love me? and you do not reach out into this community to the lost and to the dying, your one hour is wasted. You might as well stay home in your jammies, not drive on the slick roads and drink coffee and stare out the window. That's kind of like what I like to do when I don't have anything to do. Listen, our priority is God first. But we meet here to strengthen and to encourage ourselves in the word of God because every one of us here has a circle of influence. Yes. And you, when you leave here, you begin to spread out and feel, filter out into our community. And then people see things differently. They're touched by a church person that will reach out and love on them and take care of them versus someone that their priority is one hour a Sunday so they can be all hotty toddy in the community. And if you're making a resume, you do not need the church on your professional resume. Can I keep going? Sometimes it looks good, doesn't it? Well, I do this, this, and this. Coach my son's soccer. We don't have any soccer coaches here, do we? <laughs> I'm sorry, but I just got to tell you this stuff. You know, you can make a list of all the things you're doing. I attend certain church. I coach soccer. I this, I that. I work at the food bank, which is a wonderful. These are good things. The church and your position with God is not your resume. It's not an attribute. It's a way of life because we are new creatures in Jesus Christ. And you're, what we label ourselves means nothing. How we outreach into our community and to families and to those in need is when our priorities are in an alignment, that outreach will flow smoothly. Do you believe that this morning? I've totally left my notes. 
still might want to go warm up the car, we'll take off ASAP. <laughs> Nothing can take God's position in your life. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Nothing can take God's position in your life. I don't want to sound harsh, but do you know if you have a job that you think you can't be replaced, the obituary would print one day and probably the job advertisement announcement for your job would print the same paper. Hear me? We're not that important. God is important. But we got all these other things. Somehow we got them all out of balance. They're not important. God is important in our lives. If God's position is not in proper place in our lives, it won't be a priority. God won't be your priority. He'll be your emergency 911 when things are really falling apart. We can't serve two masters. With God first, this is the beauty of it, we get peace of mind. And each one of us, when we begin to put God first in our lives, we have a secured future with Christ. Who here wants a secured future with Christ? There's not a lot of security in this world right now, is there? Things that we used to think were secure are no longer secure. Things that we used to think were solid are crumbling before our eyes. But when we put Christ first, when we put God first, we have a secure future. Amen? I'm looking forward to, I'm in no hurry, but I'm looking forward to a day that will be in eternity with God. Amen? That's my secured future. And I just leave you three, three words today. Um, I want you guys to go home and do some soul searching this week. All of us. First things first. It'll take care of what ails you. I, I can guarantee it. God bless you.